So this is my maram road uh, which uh, leads to my farm. Uh, but even when there is rain, I am still able to uh, move on this road. It is not that slippery. Uh, actually, this is from where I live. This is actually not bad. So I'm almost approaching the place. Uh, this is the road which leads actually to uh, this area where I normally plant uh, grasses for my animals. And uh, this time I'm going to show you what I have. Uh, it's quite a rainy season this side. And uh, it's quite residential, but uh, this is where I have uh, these grasses. So I'm going to be parking down there um, and then I just be able to uh, harvest this grass. Uh, so guys, uh, this is my place uh, where I normally plant my grasses. Uh, originally, I used to have Chloris Guyana in this place. I decided to replace it with this super napier. Uh, guys, uh, the reason is that uh, this super napier actually grows very fast. And uh, if I can tell you a little story of how this started, uh, I actually started with um, just one cluster like this, uh, which I had. Um, I got it from a colleague. It was just one cluster like this, uh, which I got and then planted it here uh, when it actually uh, got sustained very well uh, if i can just move you closer uh, this must be it uh, it was in this area uh, this guys uh, this is what has actually given me all these others that you see and actually they go up to the other side and i have harvested some of them i'll be just showing you in a bit but that's how you're able to propagate uh, this super napier grass and guys uh, this is the modified one it's actually very good uh, just have a look at this let's see how this has actually come out well uh, you can see it uh, but also you see that our soils are very black and uh, this is because we do apply our rabbit droppings here uh, to be able to get uh, something like this so it's quite uh, that easy uh, to be able to, uh, to have this grass uh, maybe i'll just show you uh, this other one, this we just harvested uh, not so long ago, uh, like you can see. Uh, you simply cut it and then it regenerates. Uh, that's how easy it is uh, to be able to do this. Uh, we've cut a couple of them, like you can see that. And actually this whole area, uh, we did harvest it. It's just regenerating. So today we'll be harvesting that. And uh, we will be showing you the entire process. And uh, we'll also go ahead and and feed it to the goats uh, so that you actually see how this is done uh, guys this is gold uh, this is going to be the way to go if you have uh, zero grazing uh, animals be it uh, rabbits be it goats uh, this is something that you must do uh, because this is actually very nice um, you see like this one plant when we harvest it and i like to harvest it when it is still this young uh, because i realized that our goats enjoy them better when they have not overgrown uh, but the same thing to the rabbits uh, so that's why we will be harvesting at this edge so basically this is how you cut them and uh, as you can see they have some form of shoot inside they will basically regenerate so that's all we do and uh, you see that that's what i have so far got uh, so stick with me and we see uh, what we get from the entire place so this is what i've so far got and i've just harvested uh, three plants that's one this is the second one and guys now let's say if you had this and you didn't to replant it all you do is uh, you remove it from the soil then you kind of uh, separate these individual suckers like you can see uh, these ones here so this will give you quite a different plant this will give you a second plant a third plant fourth fifth six seven eight nine so from this could actually replant about 10 individual plants so that way you're just able to uh, be able to propagate and and get more from just a few plants so that's how we have been able to actually do this so guys you see this volume which i've got i've just harvested uh, just eight plants and uh, you can see from there around this place uh, these are the areas which i have harvested and uh, i have enough volumes to be able to feed uh, my goats for about three days 
I also planted um, this is pumpkin. It actually has germinated, and uh, I think I'm planning to uh, plant maize uh, or sorghum, uh, one of the two. Uh, in here, I can make just rows along here of maize or sorghum, and that will also be able to feed uh, my goats. It's actually a rainy season, so we'll not need much watering. Actually, here we haven't done any watering, and we are able to get this kind of stuff. And guys, we are within uh, a settled environment. Like you can see, if I give you a 360, everywhere you are going to see houses. So there's basically nothing that should stop you from uh, raising your own animals. Uh, this is actually very easy and uh, you should be able to utilize whatever space that you have, whether small, to at least subsidize on your cost of feed because that's what is going to push most people out of this business. If you're a farmer and uh, for any reason you have a car, guys, uh, that's going to be your van, mirrorless. Uh, this is what I use to ferry my, uh, my animal feeds and... Uh, I just have uh, those uh, chairs inclined uh, the other side and you see I have enough uh, boot space to be able to ferry anything. Then I have uh, uh, this here that I use to kind of uh, reduce on the mess. Eh? So guys I've gotten quite a good volume uh, today. Uh, this should be able to last me quite uh, some good days. Now guys this is why I like a forester because you see I can easily turn this into a van, so all more or less like a pickup truck. So that's why I like uh, uh, this version of the car. So off we go. Uh, this is how I am able to get a grass for my my goats and my rabbits. So off we go. So we are back. There we go. Uh, now we are at the farm. Uh, I've actually also tried uh, planting that uh, napier grass here and I've harvested it already. You see another one is there. But I have quite a good bunch of manure that comes from the guinea pigs, from the goats and rabbits. So here it's supposed to thrive. Uh, of course, I do have a little mango tree. Uh, it has been a dry season so I hope that now the rain has started coming. Uh, we're going to have a uh, good work there. I got a few groceries. Uh, I had about um, about 25 uh, US dollars. Uh, that's about 70, 80. Uh, I was able to get these uh, chicken gizzards, uh, sausage, then some fruit uh, drinks. Then, guys, I got some dates. Uh, these are dates, uh, very nice. Then I got some tomatoes, uh, these are tomatoes, uh, these are purple onions, uh, very nice. Then I got uh, fresh harvested uh, beans. Uh, all these things guys cost me about 25 US dollars. So I simply pull out this and the place remains as clean as I found it, at least, more or less. Yeah, you can't even know that I had animal feeds in here. Uh, so guys, uh, cleanliness is the key. Uh, so what we're doing is uh, we're just sweeping. And remember, the floor does have spaces to allow uh, the droppings or the manure to fall through uh, but that is not enough uh, sometimes you'll have to do some additional work like guys you see our goats look good and uh, these are 100 uh, percent zero grazed and uh, that's how they look uh, we just have a few of them and we hope that that is able to give us uh, just new kids in just a few days so for the feeding uh, that's the um, feeding trough which we designed uh, basically the goats uh, use those holes to kind of uh, pull the feeds and now you see uh, the whole place is actually looking neat and clean uh, for goats uh, this is going to help you to reduce disease but also you see that down there we have where we actually collect whatever drops while the, the goats are feeding is collected there and then we put it back in so basically that reduces on wastage your mineral block guys is going to be important uh, this is 
uh, for other minerals that the goats cannot get from the grasses and uh, they will be able to, to lick this uh, they actually teach themselves how to do it so you don't have to do anything uh, so far uh, those are the goats uh, that we have uh, like we said in our introductory video this one did give birth when it got here but also guys i have a plan to get actually dairy goats uh, because we do have some needs for dairy milk uh, when those do come through i'll also update you on that uh, project when it does start we do supplement with uh, banana peelings uh, these you wilt them a little bit on the sunshine then uh, they are good to be served to the goat. Uh, so we're currently uh, putting this super napier grass and uh, the goats actually love it. They actually enjoy eating it. Uh, like you can see, they have all swung in action and uh, they are actually eager to eat the grass. Basically, this is how you're able to feed your goats on zero grazing and uh, you will be able to achieve uh, these healthy animals now like you see you saw how we had actually planted them and that's how we feed them from up and then we simply do that then we're just going to provide fresh water and then monitor how that feed goes uh, if it gets done before evening we could add another set or we could uh, give them hay uh, basically we would give them hay uh, but if that grass is still uh, in there then we basically leave them to continue eating the feed. So guys, this is how easy it is uh, to be able to uh, raise goats on zero grazing. And like you see, our goats look healthy. Uh, of course, you can see that from how smooth the coat is. Uh, them not having uh, a rough coat and then uh, the body structure, which is still looking very good. Uh, that's how you're able to tell uh, that your actually your uh, goats are still in good shape. Uh, if they are growing bony, then uh, that's when you need to to take action. You know that maybe probably your uh, your feeding is lacking in terms of protein. Otherwise, uh, your your animals should be uh, looking as healthy as this. And you see that uh, this actually this feeder here works pretty well. Uh, it will limit. Uh, spillage and, uh, and and actually wasting of, of your grass uh, because now when you're in uh, zero grazing it's really basically you're maximizing your grass i uh, you shouldn't really allow for any to be wasted uh, on the floor remember when the goats put the grass on the floor and they basically step in it uh, they will not be able to eat uh, that grass uh, that's how you should basically be dealing with that kind of problem if that's what you're facing uh, we do not feed maize brand. Uh, we don't feed any other uh, crushed feeds. We only feed uh, this. And then we have Chloris Diana hay, uh, which we give to uh, these uh, in the evenings. And then uh, fresh water. And that's all we do here. If you've watched the video this far, guys, please consider subscribing. Turn on the notification bell so that next time I upload, you are notified to come and watch. Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.